Hey everybody, my name is Brian Bennett and I'm a teacher in Northern Indiana in the United States and I was asked by John if I would be willing to put a video together for the Woodham Teach Meet and so that's why I'm here. I would have loved to have been there but it was kind of expensive and you know we're, we're kind of working right now. So what, I, what I'm hoping to do in this video is to share a little bit about what I do with flipped learning with you. I'm a high school chemistry teacher and I'm going to kind of take you through my thought process with why I flipped in the beginning, what flipped learning is, and then how I'm using it now. So before I dive into the flipped learning thing, I want to give you a little bit of my background. I graduated in 2008 with a degree in biology and education. My wife and I moved to South Korea in the spring of 2009, and I began teaching chemistry that following fall. And that first year teaching was so, so hard. And it was because, A, I was in a, a brand new country. I didn't know the customs. I didn't know the language. And B, you know, I was trying to figure out all of these little things about teaching that I just needed to develop for myself, like classroom management and grading policies and, and just my style of teaching. My first year went well enough. You know, I, I had my students pass the exams and everything. But when I went back and I looked at you know, this beautiful quote unquote bell curve that I had, I was really disappointed because I realized that I had failed half of my students. And I didn't fail them in the sense that they didn't pass my class. I failed them because that bottom half of the bell curve wasn't having their needs met. And that really didn't sit well with me. So the summer of 2010, I went to Colorado for the third annual flipped learning conference in Woodland Park with John Bergman and Aaron Sams. I left that conference with a totally renewed sense of what good teaching looked like and how technology can play a role in that. So I began recording my lessons and I flipped my entire chemistry course the following year. Deciding to flip the learning cycle for your students is really difficult for both you and them because we have to readjust our way we think about education. It goes against everything that you were taught as far as good management styles or as far as good classroom structure, but what it leads to is much more meaningful and deep learning opportunities for both you and your students. So one of the questions about flipped learning is, what is it? Where does it, where does it start? What are kids doing? How is instruction being handled? And that's a really hard question to answer because there's a lot of people doing it a lot of different ways, but we're all coming back to the four same principles. So let's take a look at those. First of all, we're trying to repurpose the class time. Schools have been focused far too long on content delivery happening in the school. Yeah, the teacher used to be the content expert when there wasn't anything like the internet, but now content is available at our fingertips, including students. So I'm not the content expert anymore. You know, I've got practice with the content and I know how to explain it and to teach it, but my students can find that content on their own. So I'm trying to repurpose my class time and have content come through the experience, come through the context that I get to provide. Class time is really student-centered now. So instead of me standing up in front of the board and lecturing at my kids, they now have an opportunity to interact with the content when they're ready for it. I still provide pacing and I still provide enrichment, but my students are the ones saying, I need to go back and review this or I'm ready to move ahead. They get to make that decision and it's not based on my time scale. Third, it's active. I'm on my feet all day, every single day. And it's not up at the front on my feet. I'm moving between groups of students. I'm talking with them. I'm sitting with them. I'm struggling with them. And I'm helping them work through this on a student-to-student -student basis. Finally, and most importantly, because the content delivery portion of class has been taken out of the class time as the only time to do that, I can now focus on the process of learning rather than the process of memorizing things. What I care about now is that they have the resources and the brain power and the critical thinking skills to reason through difficult problems using the knowledge that they've built up through the, through the course of the year. And I think that's what really separates flipped learning environments from the traditional one, is that all of my students now have the resources that they need to get their personalized learning plan in place. So whenever I think about the flipped classroom done right, I always ask the question of who owns the learning? In other words, does the teacher dictate the how, when, and where of learning? Or is the student in charge of that? In my mind, there are three ideas that flipped classrooms focus on. Uh, the first is the best use of face-to-face -face time with your students. The second is to focus on higher order thinking skills in class. The third is that the students become the center of learning, not the teacher. Uh, based on this relatively loose definition, 
one flipped classroom will look very, very different from another flipped classroom. Flip class for me is all about knowing my kids and knowing where they need to go and what I need to do to help them be successful. From the UK, flip teacher, a lot of hard work, but well worth it. All right, for me, the uh, flip classroom is the beginning steps to hand the classroom back over to our students. Hi, my name is Jasper Fox Sr. What does flip class mean to me? It means more time with my students, which translates into a much more personalized educational program. So to me, flip class is about collaboration and the kind of collaboration that ends the kind of isolation and negative teacher workroom culture that pervades a lot of our schools. Flip class is also about building skills and building student skills and being a critical reader, writer, and thinker. My seven minutes is almost done, so I've got a couple closing thoughts for you. First of all, flipped learning is not for everyone. It might not fit your teaching style or even the school that you're in, and that's totally okay. Don't see this as an implorement to change the way you're doing things. All I want to do is kind of enlighten you to the idea. Second, flipped learning is really difficult, and I said that before for both teachers and students. You have to rethink the way you're doing things. Just injecting video into a classroom setting is not going to change the way things are run. Third, be willing to work with your students. Always ask for their feedback and look for ways to improve the way you're doing things to create a learning community rather than a teacher-student centric relationship. If you're interested in more information, you can follow me on Twitter. My username is Bennett Science. That's how John got in touch with me for this anyways. I'm on there pretty frequently. Also on Twitter, we have the flip class hashtag, and this is an active environment for educators across the world to be talking flipped learning, and we've got educators just about on every continent that are interested in flipped learning in one way or the other, so check that out if you're on Twitter as well. So thank you everybody so, so much for inviting me to the Woodham Teach Meet. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. Maybe next time I'll be able to make it over there, but I hope this uh, was helpful to you, and I look forward to speaking with you soon.